there's been some pretty significant development since last evening's recording. So it may not be all that bad that last night's audio was lost. Uh, in the saga that is DeAndre Williams eligibility, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the scale going every which way. He's got eligibility. He doesn't have it. His mom says he's out. Kenny, do you have uh, the statement that DeAndre made today? I think it was was a doc that, that released that, Doc Holiday. You know what? You mentioned to me at the beginning of the show that you wanted me to read this, and I said, "Yeah, I got you." Um, he, in fact, has not got us. Uh, let me, let me hold on. Give, hey, listen, I am a, I have, I have Twitter fingers over here. I can figure this out. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been kind of a back and forth, right? Like sure. it's been pretty wild. Here's, here's the statement. Um, in recent days, media stories have arisen that implied that a firm decision had been made relative to my possible return to the University of Memphis for an additional season of competition. No such decision has been made. I have consulted with counsel uh, and am evaluating potential grounds for reconsideration of the NCAA's decision to deprive me of my initial year of eligibility at the University of Evansville and, if necessary, providing mitigating factors that would warrant a waiver. The final determination will be made in the coming days. To date, I have not signed with an agent, nor did I formally declare for the draft. I have operated under the assumption that I did not have remaining eligibility, but have been advised in recent days that regaining a, session of, a season of competition is a real possibility. My mother is the rock of my life. I owe her everything and will always be loyal and grateful to her. At the time that her comments were made, she was not fully apprised of the circumstances surrounding my decision. I have enjoyed the best years of my life at the University of Memphis. If the opportunity were to return existed, I would welcome it and be proud to suit up for the Tigers in 23-24. First off, who wrote that? Because that is a <laughs> fine, fine. Well, well I, delete, I did not say his name, but... His counsel is Don Jackson Esquire with the sports group. Don Jackson is a hell of a writer. I mean, that was very well put together. I had just said, I would like to come back. There might be a possibility. Go Tigers. I'll tell you what. You spent eight years in college. You could probably write an article like that TJ. as well. TJ, come on, man. I'll say this. I have never in my life wanted to see a dumbass DeAndre foul with him in a Memphis uniform more than I do right now. It would be great to have DeAndre back, especially the way that the <laughs> great the, the way the roster is currently put, like what it how it's built. I guess is easy. Great is an that. understatement, Tej. Um, to have him back would be huge, right? I mean, you don't have that guy right now. He's undersized for the center, but we just did a whole season. With him playing under size five, and it was fine. It's fine. It was absolutely. I fine. mean, he's he would be preseason American Player of the Year. Would he not? He was just all AAC. You know for a fact, some Shoot. FAU player would yeah. be the preseason. Uh, Elijah Martin, I think Can was his you name. Do that? Mm -hmm. I could see him being up there. Um, so let <laughs> me. Do you want to give your thoughts on it first? I, I am all on board. Do it because you know what the sausage maker says. TJ, we are still trending the wrong direction. We are now 60th. I think a month ago we were in the 40s. Yeah. You want to take a guess at what just adding DeAndre and nobody else does to this I roster? Mean, it probably shoots some sky high. 33 spots wow. to 27th. Wow. With just DeAndre. Nobody else. Sign me up today. He will be 27 in October. And look, I don't care how old he is. And people make a big whoop hoo-ha. Yeah. Freaking Austin Ani's 29. A little different. It's scenario not a little there. different. I don't he care. He literally played went to play major. Who cares? <laughs> if you want to talk about his age. No, I'm with you. I'm with I you. I don't care. If it can be done. Now, the possibility of it actually happening, it sounds like they're looking at two different cases. Not cases, but two different pathways of trying to gain the eligibility here. It sounds like the first route is the COVID, right? He's only played four years of basketball. They're trying to say, I guess, his first year on academic or athletic scholarship shouldn't count. So he should technically still get a COVID year. It sounds like that's the first approach. I think they said there were two options. The second is then applying for a waiver, if I read it correctly. Yeah. So I'm not sure how anyone's not familiar with the story by now. His freshman year, he was academically ineligible, I think was what it was. I think it was a credit issue. Yeah. 
the prep school he went to was unaccredited. So basically he was just not eligible to participate. So, um, I believe- and then his, his first year or second year at Evansville that he played, played, he only played like 17, 18 games. I think he yeah, it was something like year. that, but his clock had already started, I think was the right. Issue. It's the, so, um, and so that is why he's going to require the waiver because he's technically already used his five years, but we've seen guys go beyond five years. Most of the time it's for medical reasons. Um, that quarterback for Houston, he may have played seven years. Ke- not Kevin Cobb. That's who came up. No, first. it was, not uh, bro, come on. You know who I'm talking about. I know though. who you're talking about. It's on um, the freaking tip of my tongue. He played forever as well. So a little different situation. Um, I'd, it, trust me, I apply for it. If you think you have a case, apply for it. The worst they can say is no, whatever, right? Um, I, I think it could, one could probably argue. Case Keenum. Case Keenum. I should probably know that being a Vikings fan. Um, wow. Remember that playoff game he won? Yeah, it was sick. Anyway, go ahead. DeAndre. Um, I think... Now I kind of lost where I was going with that. Well, I don't even remember where I was at when you said Case Keenum. We got me so thrown Sorry. off there. What do you think the possibility of this? Oh, it's been? a zero percent chance. Zero percent chance. And that may be really harsh. I would love to have him. That back. is truly and shocking to me because those those of you are friends, close friends that are watching. We know that you are with TJ. It's everything 50/50. is fifty yeah, fifty. It either one's... is happening or it's not. So for him to say zero, TJ literally has. No faith that DeAndre will TJ is play it, another second. Is it because you don't trust the NCAA or you don't think that his case, case is valid? No, the case I think is great. I think it's the NCAA doesn't want to help Penny or Memphis out in any any way they can. I know that sounds like um, conspiracy theory type of situation, but when has the I mean, NCAA I given us any favors? If it's up to them, yeah. It's a waiver I'm, situation, and I don't touch any waiver situation. I, I want nothing to do with it. Look, I don't – he's only played four years of basketball. Whenever his clock started, I don't see what the harm in letting him play again. Like, that's the whole theory, right, is when did his clock start? Right, that's the sure. whole waiver is when did his clock start. And the NCAA is saying his clock started – when he was deemed ineligible, right. when if I remember correctly, and I might be wrong on this, I need to go back and look. The NCAA came back after that first season and said we were wrong, like that he shouldn't well, have been deemed ineligible. If that's the case, then he has a damn good case. Yes, and that's his whole thing is he was led under the assumption that he was ineligible and that he did, or excuse me, that wasn't he has counting against him. Correct. And he, but now he thinks he doesn't have any eligibility left. And they're like, well, you may have a case given A, B, and C. And so now he thinks he can reapply. Well, I will say this. The strangest part of all of this is what the compliance office said. They are not yeah. standing behind him. I mean, they not had all. basically come out and were like, you know, he's exhausted all eligibility that he has. Yeah. Even if that's the case. And I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know anybody in the compliance office, but. I mean, wouldn't you have just been like, yeah, we're going to do whatever we can to help DeAndre pursue, you know, if this is what he wants to do, like he said that his best years have been in Memphis, he yeah. could go down as one of the all-time favorite Tigers for a lot of people. Like, why would you not just come out with some sort of statement of support, whether you think he has sure. eligibility or not? Like, sure. what's the harm in that? It's a weird look. It is. I think they're off operating off – just straight black and white. Like they have a rule book. They see right. rule four, section A, whatever. Yeah. I think it's going boom, 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 boom. Yeah, they I mean, they're seeing there. that very first year as clock started. Not sure. It is what it is. That's what, yeah. I'm, you know. And I guess that's their job as a compliance office is to, it's got to, it's very black and white. Yeah. For them. But still. I, I don't want to say it's a nothing burger, but I think this whole thing has been around for what feels like a week, maybe a little more now. And it's been out there a while. Has it only been a week? I, I don't know. I, I mean, this back, back and Twitter forth and trace is... it down, but it's been out for a while because you've had several people talk to people related to him. Maybe not him directly. See, that's, that's the problem. I think that's sure. what the problem. I don't know that anybody. One, maybe they weren't reaching out to DeAndre, or two, they were and they just weren't getting feedback because I think some of the reports that were like he has done. Yeah, that was people reaching out to compliance office, and we know obviously with their statement, okay, mm-hmm. that lines up. They were saying no, he, there's no chance. Sure. 
So if you didn't actually hear it from, but then to your point, you try to go through the family and his mom yesterday said he's done. And then DeAndre comes back today and is like, I love my mom to death, but she didn't know what the hell she's talking about. Which makes sense though, because he, he was not under the impression that he had eligibility left as well. So if he doesn't think it, why would his mom all of a sudden be like, you know what? Maybe there was that one freshman year where he was lied to. So that'd be kind of weird, but I don't know. It kind of seemed like he did think he did. And maybe he and his mom just hadn't really talked about it. Maybe in the back of his mind. I think once he talked to the, the legal counsel, they were kind of like, damn, okay, maybe you have something here. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, nonetheless, it's obviously there's something there. There's smoke there. There's TJ says zero. I say there's some sort of possibility. I think he's got put a percentage on it. You oh, coward. Gosh. I'll steal yours. It's 50 50. I love it, dude. It makes, makes my heart happy inside. I don't know. I do. Leaving it up to the NCAA does give me a lot of doubt that it would actually happen. I also sure. think it's, I mean, he's already applied for a waiver once. And to be honest, we didn't even get an answer. The only reason that was clear is because the free transfer rule passed through, yeah. right? Like he didn't actually get the waiver approved. We submitted it and we're waiting and waiting and waiting. He only became eligible because of that rule passing. So how much does portsmouth play into this have we we've never to my knowledge seen anyone play in portsmouth and come back and they've been eligible well he said it in his statement that he never declared so i'm wondering if that's the language if that's even that's probably a part of the the case that has to be made is you went through some of you went through some of those processes and you're right the portsmouth invitational usually once you play in that you're you're basically declaring your eligibility is done, right? Sure. Like you're you're out. But that could be he's saying in his statement that he never actually like officially declared for the draft. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the Portsmouth thing though is like typically the guys that are going, you have exhaust like sure, sure. Right. And if he's if it comes down to that, which is a glorified exhibition game. And they're not going to allow him to be eligible. That's absurd. Yeah, but I could totally see a situation where you, when you sign up for Portsmouth, you sign off on a documentation. It's somewhere in fine print. It says something like, hey, I'm not coming back to college. Like, I could totally see that being a situation, too. It could be. But again, that's for like true seniors that are done, done. No, I'm with you. I mean, I guess they could hold him to it and be like, you know. If this was the route you wanted to take, you had to have done it before you yeah. participated in these yeah. events. So I think, I mean, you were effectively giving up your eligibility by sure. going to, to, to be at the showcase. Yeah. I think we agree. Like we, we would love to have DeAndre back, like without question, I mean, we, with we no talk, hesitation. We talked about it when we thought J-Law was staying. You had Chandler, J-Law, and Jaden coming back, and we were sitting there saying, you know, you got all these freshmen, these transfers coming in. Like, you need some of that continuity. You need sure. these guys that are older that have been in the program to help establish the culture of the program and what Penny's trying to do. Like, who better to have than DeAndre, who's, I mean, not to bring his age up again, but literally he will be <laughs> the oldest guy in college basketball, like a true veteran in the locker room yeah. that knows he, it'll be his fourth year. Do you want to hear something crazy? Penny, like, who better to have in that spot? Sorry to interrupt you, Trey, but this put out on Twitter. If he were to play for the Grizzlies, he'd be the second oldest player saw, on the team. I saw that. He and Tyus would be, right? Uh, no, Steven Adams. Oh, Steven. Well, he and Tyus would be tied at 27th, I think is what, for second oldest. Yeah, I think Adams. Dude, he's damn near as old as Passner was when he took over the head coaching job. It is pretty wild. I, and I think, just to kind of wrap up the DeAndre thing, I think unequivocally we would both love to have him back. I don't think either one of us. I don't know that I believe you. Is leaning one way or the other? Maybe, well, correction. I am definitely strong, heavy lean one way. I don't think it's happening. I just don't. I I, I don't would see be the NCAA shocked. doing any favors. I would be. I won't say shocked. I would be very surprised if it ends up going through. Yeah, I'll put it that way. And I think that's the the general consensus, right? Yeah. I think most people probably feel that way. Yeah. I mean, I would say, honestly, if DeAndre were with us. And we know that you were listening. Like he would probably say that he would be surprised too. Yeah. Just given his history with of how course. things have gone with him in the NCAA. Yeah, of course. 